everyone, and welcome to day eight of Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber. My name's Dakota, also known as the Bearded IT Dad and the host of the IT Career Podcast, where I give advice and insight on how to advance your career in the tech industry. But today, I am guiding you through day eight of Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber. Now, if you're just joining us, that's okay. You can join anytime between now and December 24th and work through all the amazing tasks Try Hack Me has in store this year. And let's not forget this year's $100,000 prize draw. Now, with that said, let's dive into today's task, Shell Codes of the Worlds Unite. Glitch the Hacker, clever yet distrusted, wrote a script with skills finely adjusted, Shellcode magic to his home it would send, where secrets of Wareville he carefully penned. Glitch, a skilled but mistrusted hacker, was prepping for a tech conference. He was eager to share his shellcode script that remotely accessed his home systems. As he worked, he noticed Mayor Malware's henchmen lurking nearby. They're wasting their time. I don't have anything they want, Glitch chuckled. He didn't realize that hidden in his home system was something they desperately sought. A research paper he wrote on Wareville's defenses, a treasure Mayor Malware was eager to obtain. Now, let's go ahead and pull up the task for today. So let's look at some of the requirements for today's task. You will need the attack box today. So let's go ahead and get that fired up. You can do so just by scrolling up to the top of the screen clicking start attack box. And you'll notice it will start here in the split screen view. We're gonna go ahead and let that start up and see what else we need for today's task. We will need a VM. So we're gonna go ahead and come down here. You can see where it says start machine. We're gonna go ahead and click start machine to start our VM for today's task. Once again, it will load in the split screen view. Now we can also see there is split screen view available, of course. There is no direct link. Also, you can alternatively connect to the VM via remote desktop, and those credentials are right here below. But for simplicity's sake in this tutorial, we're just gonna be using the split screen view today. A reverse shell code to a system so tight. He planned to showcase at the tech conference night. Eager to share his shell code could impress. He aimed to enlighten, to teach and progress. Now, before we dive in, let's quickly go over a few key topics to make today's challenge easier. I'm just going to kind of skim over these. If you want to read more into it, it's all here for you. Now, first off, what is shellcode? Shellcode is a small piece of code that attackers use to take control of a vulnerable system, often through exploits like buffer overflows. Think of it of sneaking commands into a system to make it do whatever the attacker wants. Next, we have PowerShell. PowerShell is a powerful tool used by system administrators to automate tasks and manage systems. Unfortunately, attackers also love it because it is so flexible and can run scripts in memory, making it harder to detect. The next thing you need to know is Windows Defender. Windows Defender is Windows built-in antivirus tool. It scans for malicious scripts, but attackers have found ways around it, like disguising their code or running it directly in memory. Next, the Windows API. The Windows API is like a toolkit that programs use to talk to Windows and control things like memory, files, or processes. Attackers use specific tools in this kit, such as virtual alloc and create threads to run their malicious code, tools that we'll explore later today. Finally, a reverse shell. It is where the target system, the one that's being hacked, connects back to the attacker system, giving them remote access. And in this task, we'll actually create one to complete the challenge. So let's kind of break everything down step by step. But Mayor Malware's minion, Sneaky and Sly, found his script and gave it a try. They tampered the code, changed the port and IP, twisted his work with a sinister glee. Here's what you'll do. First, we're gonna open up the terminal on the attack box. We're gonna run the following command. And don't worry, I'm gonna break this down for you here in a bit. So we're gonna take this command here. We're gonna go ahead and go over to our attack box. We're gonna open up terminal. Make this a little bit larger so you guys can see. Let's go ahead and paste it in here. 
So we can paste it here. Now, before we go ahead and run this, let's go ahead and change this section here, the L host and actually enter our attack box IP. And this will be different depending on what your IP of your attack box is. So mine is 10.10.149.102. And go ahead and click enter to run that. When you run this command, it will generate shellcode and your output should look something like this. Now let's actually break down what the MSF Venom command is and actually doing by piece by piece. So the first part of the MSF Venom command is the dash P windows four slash X64 four slash shell reverse TCP. So what is this? This is this tells MSF Venom that the type of payload we need to create. In this case, we are creating a reverse shell for a Windows machine. The L host is the IP address of the attack box. This is where the reverse shell will connect back to when it is executed on the target machine. Next, we have L port 1111. This is the port that your machine will use the attack box when listening for the connection. When the target machine connects back, it will actually use this port. You can pick different ports, but it has to match whatever your listener is set to. Finally, dash F PowerShell. This tells MSF Venom to format the output as a PowerShell script. That way it is ready to run on a Windows machine. Pretty straightforward, right? Once you understand these parts, you can tweak it the command differently for different scenarios you might have. Now let's talk about the actual shell code we generated. The output you saw is a hex encoded byte array. Those chunks of data like 0xfc or 0xe8 and so on, these hex numbers represent instructions for the target machine, kind of like a language that the computer understands. Instead of a long string of binaries, ones and zeros, hex makes it more human readable. For example, 0xfc is much easier to read than 111100 whatever. <laughs> to execute this shellcode though, we will need to load into memory and then create a thread to run it. For this, we're gonna use PowerShell. Now here is the PowerShell script we are gonna be using today. Now, I know it looks like a lot of code and it can seem overwhelming, but don't worry. We're gonna break it all down step-by-step step for you today. And the good news is if you're new to cybersecurity, you don't need to memorize this all and all of these functions. Most penetration testers use pre-built tools to handle shell code execution. So you don't need to worry about creating this from scratch every time. The important thing is understanding the big picture so you can connect all the dots. All right, let's walk through the script and see what it's actually doing step by step. And don't worry, I'll make it super simple and easy for you to follow. So breaking down the script, the script starts off by defining a few C sharp classes to use some important window API functions. Here's what they do. The first thing we have here is virtual alloc or virtual allocate. This sets aside memory in the process so we can store and run shell code. Next, we have create thread. This kicks off a new thread in the process to execute the shell code. These C sharp classes are made available in the PowerShell script with the add type command, so we can use them in the script. Now let's move on to storing and running the shellcode. The shellcode is saved as a byte array in the buff variable you can see right here. And the shellcode placeholder right here is where we will paste the shellcode we generated earlier with using MSF Venom. Next, we're gonna allocate some memory for the script to run using the virtual alloc to allocate memory in the sh for the shellcode to actually execute. Windows will decide where to place it and ensure that the memory is both readable and executable necessary for running to the shellcode today. Next, we gotta copy that shellcode somehow into memory. So the script copies the shellcode from the buff into the allocated memory using Marshall copy, making it ready to execute. Finally, we're gonna run the shellcode. Using the create thread, the script starts a new thread that executes the shellcode in memory. And then the wait for single object function ensures that the thread finishes before moving on. Okay, let's actually start getting our hands dirty with executing some of the script. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop back in our attack box and we're gonna type the command nc dash nvlp one 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 one. 
Now, what this does is it actually starts a listener on port 1111 waiting for the reverse shell to connect back. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the script ready for deployment. So first, let's go ahead and go back to the desktop. We're gonna right click, create document, and we're just gonna create an empty file. Let's open that up here. So you guys can see what we're doing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and copy the actual shell code script here to our VM. Paste it in here. All right, now what we'll need to do is to get our shell code into our script. You can see right here, there is a placeholder. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and Highlight this section all the way out up to the byte buff right here. Click copy. And we can replace this line in the script. Okay, so now we have our script for our reverse shell deployment, but you can't just copy and paste that right into PowerShell. Windows Defender might actually potentially detect it. If you look at the instructions here, you actually have to copy and paste it section by section, block by block. So let's go ahead and grab the first part of the script right up until the shell code and paste that into PowerShell. So our shell code starts down there. So we're gonna grab this first section, copy it, Grab it off of our clipboard here. All right, now on our VM, we're gonna fire up PowerShell and paste that in and click enter. Now let's go back and actually grab the shell code. Copy that, grab it off our clipboard. Click enter. And now we'll grab the last section of the script. Copy that, grab it off our clipboard. And with any luck with this last section, once it finishes, it'll take a second or two, we can go back to our attack box. And just like that, we have successfully achieved a reverse shell to our VM. It is that easy, you guys. And just to confirm, we can just type any command like the DIR command to list our directories. And you can see we have access to this machine. Now, this might seem like a lot, but take it step by step and you'll see how everything starts to come together. This hands-on approach is how you'll build a strong foundation in cybersecurity. Now, Glitch must act, no time to delay, to fix the shell code and keep the foes at bay. He tweaks and he codes to set the wrongs right, protecting his secrets with all of his might. Now, let's dive into the story and troubleshoot the issue in this part of the task. Glitch has realized he is no longer receiving incoming connections from his home base. Mayor Malware's minion team seems to have tampered with the shellcode and updated both the IP and the port, preventing Glitch from connecting. The correct IP for Glitch is the attack box's IP, and the successful connection port should be 4444. Can you help Glitch identify and update the shellcode with the correct IP and port to restore the connection and regain control? So the next part of this task is we're going to actually need to do all this over again and make sure we're using the correct IP address and this new port number. So let's go ahead and go back here. We're gonna close this document out. Let's go ahead and close our terminal here. Let's go ahead and open up a new terminal here. Make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it easier. Now let's go ahead and run the command we did earlier in the very beginning, the MSF Venom command. So let's go ahead and we'll clear this out. We're gonna paste that in here. Let's close that. Paste here just to make it easier. Now, it said the IP address was going to be the attack, attack box's IP. So we already know that. So we're going to do 10, 10, 149.102. And instead of using port 1111, we're going to use port number 4444. And everything else should stay the same. Go ahead and click enter there. Give it a couple seconds for it to do its thing. It should generate us a new shellcode for us to use. 
So now let's go ahead and run our shell code again on our remote VM. So let's go ahead and launch a new PowerShell window. And let's walk through the steps once again. So first, let's go ahead and just copy and paste this first part of the script again into our VM. We're gonna go ahead and copy. We're gonna paste it in there. Enter. Now let's go back to our attack box. We're gonna get our shell code here. Copy this. Now, before we go ahead and paste the last part of that script in, let's go ahead and open up and start our listening on port 444. So you can see we are listening on port 444. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna go back here and we're gonna paste this very last section line by line here. And with any luck, we can see we have remote access again. So the question we got to answer is what is the flag value once glitch gets reverse shell on the digital vault using port 444? And one thing I'll note is the flag may take about a minute to appear in the desktop directory. You actually can view the contents of the flag by pasting this command into our reverse shell. So what we're just going to do is we're going to paste that in there. Look at that. There is our flag. So let's go ahead and copy that. Grab it off of our clipboard here. And let's go ahead and paste it in here. And just like that, we have solved today's challenge. We have created a reverse shell to another computer and was able to access it remotely. Now, if you found today's task interesting at all and you're interested about learning more, there is this AI evasion shell code room that is a completely free room that you can go and learn more and try out some more. So let's go ahead and click complete, complete there. And as you will see, day eight is now complete for us. Well, that is it for today's task. I really hope you guys are enjoying Try Hack Me's advent of cyber. There is something for everyone, no matter where you are in your cybersecurity journey. If you haven't already, click the link down in the description and go check out Try Hack Me or go to tryhackme.com forward slash Christmas to join in the fun and have a chance at the $100,000 prize pool this year. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, keep learning.